How we doing, fellas? Yeah, it's a little bit on the late side. Should have got to this earlier. It's all right. Sort of the cards a long while ago, but wee hours of the morning, and then I slept and procrastinated, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, I know me procrastinated. Who would have thunk it? So <clears throat> the multicolor artifact land and apocalypse. Wrap it up, invasion block today. Now I gotta say, Invasion was a great block. It really was. Um, I mean, despite the fact that you had a lot of really ho hum, unexciting cards in it, it was still a great block. So, lands. Uh, I have a pair of uh, Shiv and Reefs here. <coughs> it's part of a cycle of cards where we of basically enemy colored pain lands. Um, they did enemy colored pain lands before in Tempest, but they came into play tapped. These don't. These are better. Oh, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Artifacts. We've got a few interesting things here. We've got, uh, we've got here the Emblazoned Bolt, the Golem. He's uh, two colors for a 1 2 with a kicker of X. You may only spend colored mana on X, and no more than one mana of each color may be spent this way. If you paid the kicker cost, Emblazoned Golem comes into play with X plus one plus one counters on it. I don't think there's a way that you could uh, phrase that any better, really. Uh, what else we got here? Mask of Intolerance, two colors. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if there are four or more basic land types amongst lands that player controls, Mask of Intolerance does three damage to them. It's alright. Dodecapod. 3-3 three, three, if a spell or an ability opponent controls would cause you to discard it. Uh, it put it into play with two plus one plus one counters on it instead of into your graveyard. 3-3 three, three for four mana. It... If I recall correctly, it originally was printed as Sand Golem and Mirage Block. I'm trying to remember. <coughs> so it's like, yeah, Dodecapod is not an original idea here. <coughs> Dragon Arch, five colorless, two colors tap, put a multicolored creature card from your hand to play. That's a lot of mana. I mean, five just to play it, guys. Really? I mean, granted, it also gets around most forms of counterspell once it hits the board and all, but still. <coughs> still, for five months, you're expecting something a little bit more spectacular, I guess? I don't know. Brass Herald, he's a 2-2 two -two when he comes into play. Choose a creature type. Reveal the top four cards of your library, put all cards of the chosen type in your hand, the rest on the bottom. Yeah, that sounds familiar, right? We've been seeing that in every color with a lot of different drives. We saw it in white with soldiers, red with goblins, uh, green we saw it with elves and kavu, black we saw it with zombies, and blue we saw it with drakes, if I recall correctly. I'm trying to remember if there was a merfolk one, I don't remember. I should have did it yesterday. Oh, well. Um, oh, and he has one other th fun, happy thing. Creatures of the Chosen Type get plus one, plus one. So he kind of functions as a universal tutor and lord. Which is not a bad combination. Legacy Weapon. Seven Colas. Legendary Artifact. Pump one mana of each color into it. Remove target permanent from the game. That'll deal with a lot of different things. Yes, that'll even deal with Emrakul. Emrakul the Eon's Torrent, or that he calls himself. Um, Emrakul has protection from colored spells. You know, not only is this a non-colored effect, it's not a spell. It would be put into a graveyard from anywhere... Reveal, shuffle it. Yeah. Fun stuff.
more split cards. We saw split cards in Invasion. There weren't any in Plane Shift. Now they're back in Apocalypse with enemy color combinations. That's nice. We've got Order and Chaos. Um, order removes an attacking, uh, exiles a target attacking creature for three calls and a white at instant speed. Um, Chaos is two calls and a red for an instant. Creatures can't block this turn. So those are actually both pretty good effects. And the batter on this thing is running low. Please tell me I'm not going to have to display stuff today. I don't want to do that. Uh, life and death. Uh, da, 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 da. All your lands are 1 1 creatures until end of turn. Uh, death returns a creature from your graveyard to play, and you lose life equal to its mana cost. Death is actually really good. Never noticed how good death was before. Fire and Ice, this was largely regarded as the best of them. The red version did, uh, they're both instants for a colorless and one of their color. Fires two damage as you divide as you choose amongst any number of creatures and or players. And Ice is tap target permanent draw card. Uh, night and Day. Uh, night gives target creature Nego and one until end of turn. Uh, day gives uh, all creatures target player controls plus one plus one until end of turn. And finally, Illusion Reality. Uh, illusion, uh, target spell or permanent becomes the color of your choice till end of turn. Reality, destroy our target artifact. Reality generally being the better of the two there. Go fig, reality being better than illusion, would have thunk it. The gold cards. Alrighty. <coughs> Guys, uh, for the most part, we've covered most of the two drops the other day, uh, a few days ago. Talking about the whole build a better bear thing. Uh, Guys, sky focus. Rightly regard, regard is probably the best of them. It's a 2 2 flyer for a blue and a green. Goblin Legionnaire also is not bad. It's a 2 2 for a red and a white. You can pump red and sack it for two damage target creature or player, or pump white and sack it and to prevent the next two damage that would be dealt to target creature or player. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the white ability used on it. I really don't. Lanwar Dead, it's a 2 2 for a black and a green. Tap for black. I actually do. You have some hanging around elsewhere in an elf deck, I think. Uh, Patrick Warrior, we talked about him. He's okay. Razorfin Hunter is the odd man out in the cycle. He's not a 2 2, but he does tap for one damage target creature or player. That makes him nice. Squeeze and Brace. <coughs> this is an interesting one. It's a white-red. It's a creature enchantment. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Enchanted creature is put into a graveyard. Return that creature to owner's hand. See, that's kind of spiffy. That is kind of spiffy. Consume Strength. That was an awesome card back in the day. Uh, calls black-green instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. And a second target creature gets neg two, neg two. Both till end of turn. Shazam, right? Emily Tree Folk, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3. That alone makes it halfway decent. So it calls some black and a green. You pump black and green into it <coughs> to give it plus 1, plus 1 to end of turn. So, hey, you know, it, 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 it's uh, a Tree Folk shape thing. You know, yeah. Goblin Trenches. Call spread white. Enchantment. Pump two calls and sack a land to put two one one red and white Goblin Soldier tokens into play. It's okay. I mean, I've put it in the sideboard for another deck before, and I don't know. I just don't think it's ever really worked out. I've never really felt compelled to use it. It's an interesting effect. Don't get me wrong. Quicksilver Dagger. This is one I always kept my eye out for in draft. Uh, Colorless red bl and uh, blue creature enchantment. Uh, enchanted creature gains tap. Deal one damage target player. Draw a card. Uh, so, yeah, the ability to, like, you know, ping your opponent and draw a card every turn, that's nice. That's nice. Soul Link's an interesting little card. Uh, Colors white, black. Uh, enchant creature. Uh, whenever enchanted deals damage or receives damage, you gain that much life. Yeah. Squeeze Revenge. There are lots of times I just picked this up as a filler card in draft. 
Um, I don't think I could really recommend this card. Uh, Colos, blue, red, sorcery. Choose a number, flip that number of coins. If you win all the flips, draw that many cards. I'm sorry, draw twice as many cards as you flipped. It's it's still meh. It's still really meh. Temporal Spring, Colus Green, Blue, Sorcery, put target permanent on top of its owner's library. That will slow people down. That that's a massive tempo hit. Guided passage, blue, red, green, sorcery. Reveal cards. Reveal the cards in your library. An opponent that chooses from among them a creature, a land, a non-creature, a... A creature, a land, and a card that is neither a creature nor a land. You put the chosen cards into your hand, then shuffle. It's kind of interesting. I wonder what would happen. Yeah, oh, that would be me. Play a deck with a bunch of guided pass, four guided passages, a bunch of creatures, a bunch of lands, and some planeswalkers. Yeah, that'd be nice. Overgrown estate, uh, black, green, white. Sack of land for three life. It's basically an expensive version of expensive tricolor version of Zurin Orb, which is really not all that great because Zurin Orb was zero to cast and an artifact. Blah blah blah. Um, as I'm going through this, you'll notice that there's a lot of cards I'm missing. Um, <clears throat> being the last part of the block, we didn't draft it as much for as long as the others. Um, there was a lot of really good stuff in Invasion. That, to be perfectly honest, I didn't get the chance to get my grubby little paws on. Uh, Flowstone Charger, he's a 2-5 for 2 colors, red-white. Uh, when he attacks, he gets plus 3 neg 3 till end of turn. He's alright. I think I've got a little bit of a sore throat right now. That's alright. <laughs> Jungle Barrier, 2 cold screen blue, 2 6. Walls can't attack. Yeah, but this is back when walls still had uh, rules baggage based on their type. Uh, when it comes into play, draw a card. Yeah, mm, whoop dee dee. It's, it's not exciting, you know. Um, these days we have Wall of Omen, which itself is effectively a white version of an older green card, uh, Wall of Blossoms. So it's like, why why even you have that when Wall of Blossoms was better and older? I don't know. <coughs> oh well. Uh, Martyr's Tomb, two colors, white, black, pay two life, prevent the next one damage. It would be Delta Target creature this turn. Yeah, it's alright. I don't think I've ever seen it played, though, so think about that one, guys. Power Stone Minefield, two colors, red, white. Whenever a creature attacks or blocks, Minefield does two damage to it. That's interesting. Um, we've also it's it uh, light minefield in uh, if I recall the name of the card correctly from uh, uh, Zendikar block uh, harkens back to this Mystic Snake. Oh, this is a card that was a pain in the butt. So where was I? Oh yes, yes, the Mystic Snake. He was a royal pain in the butt. Ox. Oh jeez. He's a 2-2 for 4 mana. That seems really overcosted. He's a 2-2 with Flash for 4 mana. Still seems overcosted. He's a 2-2 with Flash for 4 mana. That when he hits the board, he counters a spell. Okay. that That's looking a lot better, don't it? Um, it's actually... Um, I'm trying. I can't remember what it was called, but there was a card. I believe it was in uh, Zendikar block that was two colors and two blue to counter a spell and put a two-two illusion token on the board. Not terrifically different from this, other than this is the colors of green and two blue to for a snake that counters something when it hits the board. Technically, this is actually slightly better because there are plenty of ways to, especially with reusable effects bounce your creature back to your hand and then recast it. So, yeah, this this guy could do evil funk. Evil funk. Even eviler than Denny's Dumpster Funk. Sadly, I only own one two. Though I think I've got one or two in Time Spiral as well. Yeah, he was uh, time-shifted. He was fun. 
Suffocating Blast, the color is 2 blue and a red, instant, counter spell, 3 damage target creature. It's not bad. It would be better if it was 3 to target creature or player. Um, I'm guessing they weren't trying to uh, steal Undermine's Thunder. Um, I know Undermine did see at least a little bit of turn tournament usage. I don't recall how much. Um, I wasn't really playing heavy. I, I, I've never been a heavy constructed player, you know what I'm saying? Sadly, one of these. Speaking of cards that were uh, time shifted, here we have a trio of lightning angels, or as she was uh, nicknamed Miss America because she's red, white, and blue. Calls red, white, blue for 3 4 flying haste vigilance. That's pretty saucy. That's actually really really saucy. I like that a lot. Um, what can I say? Um, it's Lightning Angel, I mean. She is my benchmark for a four mana creature. A f well, a four mana three color creature. Especially one with flying. Which is why um, I'm not wild about Retaliator Griffin. Because Retaliator Griffin is no Lightning Angel. So, moving on. Ether Mutation. Free colors, green, red, sorcery. Return creature to owner's hand. Put X sapperling tokens into play where X is the creature's converted mana cost. It's not bad. It's a little on the high high end of the mana curve, but it's not bad. Battle Cattle! Minotaur Illusion is three colors, blue, red, three, four. Pump a Colson of blue, and he gains Shroud till end of turn. Pump red and sacrifice him. Deals damage equal to his power to target creature. He's okay. I like him just because he's a Minotaur, and he's not even a bad Minotaur. He's playable. He's a playable Minotaur. Unlike the Minotaur t Tactician, which is dangerously close to being unplayable jank. Prophetic Bolt, three colors, blue, red, four to target creature or player. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one into your hand, the rest on the bottom. That's not bad. Um, it's an instant, it's five. It's a bit on the high end of the mana curve, though. This one's got junk on it. Not particularly pleased by that. Oh well. Spirit Monger, five mana, three black, green, for a six, six. Whenever it deals damage to a creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Uh, regenerates for black, and you pump green, and he becomes color of your choice. Um, this guy's just really, really solid. Five mana for a 6-6 six, six regenerator by itself is usually pretty good. The fact that he gets bigger whenever he damages creatures is... That's just gravy right there. That's just really gravy. So is the color changing, really. But the color changing part was actually important at the time. Chromat. Oh, dear me, oh my. Uh, he's one of the few five color creatures that were that have ever been printed in the game. And at this particular point in time, he was only the second five color creature to be printed. The first was Sliver Queen. Well, if you want to get technical, I believe the 1995 World Champion predates them both and is five color, but um, y that that never saw a mass print. Anyway, he's a five five for five, which wouldn't seem that bad if it weren't for the fact that he requires one of each mana to cast. Um, pump white black, destroy target creature blocking or blocked by him. Pump blue red, flying till end of turn. Black, green, regenerates. Red, white, gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Green, blue, put him on top of owner's library. Um, yeah. Um, Chromat had a bunch of weird, has a bunch of weird abilities. I don't know what to think of him. Um... He's he's one of those cards that you just put, that is best used in some kind of a reanimator deck. 
Uh, last stand. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this thing before. It does stuff. It's uh, one mon of each color, sorcery. Your opponent loses two life for each swamp you control. Uh, it deals damage equal to the number of mountains you control to target creature. You get a 1-1 one, one sapling token for each force you control. You gain two life for each planes you control. You draw a card for each island you control, and then discard that many cards from your hand. Um, it would almost be faster to say what it doesn't do. It doesn't cook you breakfast. How's about that, guys? Yes, that's right, guys. Last Stand does not cook you breakfast, because when you're making a Last Stand, you don't have time for breakfast. You don't even have time for tea and biscuits, okay? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't say that with a straight face. Okay. Sue me. Uh, Fungal Shambler, he's a 6-4 Trample. Whenever he deals damage to an opponent, you draw a card, and that opponent discards a card. Uh, honestly, for 7 mana, I, I don't really feel he's worth it. Especially for a tricolor card, seven mod. I'm sorry, guys. I, I I just I just can't justify. It. Death mutation. It's another fun-looking card that I can never justify. It's eight mana, six of black and a green. Destroy target non-black creature, and you get sapling tokens equal to that creature's converted mana cost. I'm sorry. It's eight. It's an eight mana targeted removal spell with a color restriction. I don't care how many token dudes it gives you. I'm not playing that. Maybe I'd play an EDH. Maybe. And that's a big maybe, because an EDH, even 8 mana is pushing the curve a little high. Speaking of 8 mana, you have my embrace, 5 colors, green, blue, blue. Uh, you control enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and trample. No. I would not play that. Maybe. Once again, EDH is a huge maybe for that. Um, I'm not saying... It, it's a good effect. Don't get me wrong. It's a really good effect. But the mana cost is prohibitively high. Captain's Maneuver. Yeah, it's a cute little card. X, red, white, instant, the next X damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn is dealt to another target creature or player instead. That's not bad. The only, honestly, the only complaint I have about it is that it's X-based. Um, that's one of the reasons why, for example, I absolutely loved um, Reflect Damage back in uh, Mirage. It was three colors, red, white, redirect all damage dealt by one source to that source's controller. That was a great card. It really was. Um, I frequently used that card to uh, redirect, say, uh, damage that my opponent's creatures were going to do to my creatures, to my opponent. Yeah, I'll block your Sarah I'll block your Sanger Vampire with my Sarah Angel. I'll reflect the damage from the Sanger Vampire back on you. You take four, Sarah eats your Sanger. Good day. Good day. Day. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, um... I, I, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in Invasion Block that I don't have, especially in, uh... Plane Shift and, uh, Apocalypse. It was a really, really fun block. The awesome was in the gold cards, really, for the most part. That is the multicolor cards. Um, that there was just a lot of fun stuff going on back in the day. Um, if I had it to do over again, I'll be perfectly honest. Being a better, dra a lot better drafter now than I was then, I would love to go back and replay each and every single invasion draft I was ever in, and I would probably do a lot better. I would, but, um, what can I say, c'est la vie, it's the, you, can't, you know, you can't change the past, etc., etc.,
who happens. So anyways, so anyways, invasion block, that leaves me corsets and scars of Mirrodin. I'm going to start scars tomorrow, guys. Starting scars tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm not going to be able to say too much about it, really, because of how much I've drafted and how many times I've covered a lot of the cards on it. I don't think I've got a lot new to say about it. I really don't. But I'm going to go through it. I'm going to talk about it. And hopefully, it won't take anywhere near as long as the rest of this stuff has. Knock on, uh, knock on card boxes. Screw wood! Card boxes! It used to be wood. Really? That's what paper's made out of. Alright, have a good one, fellas. Uh, it's gonna take a while to get this up. I have to splice two videos together and then upload them to YouTube. I'm not expecting this to be, um, hitting YouTube before midnight my time. Poo happens. Oh, well. Um, so whenever you watch this video, guys, have a good night, have a good day, have a good whatever, have something. Have some pork and beans. Yeah, that's it. Pork and beans! Pork and beans. I don't get it either. It's okay, guys. Be good.